Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Kicking Show, our 20th episode, brought to you every week by Kicking the Tires. It's our official podcast, and if you notice this week, there's somebody new, or at least that's where he's at on my screen. <laughs> he's over here on mine. <laughs> Christian Coley joining Kicking the Tires as our ARCA correspondent. And uh, Christian, welcome aboard. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, why you decided to join our crazy ragtag bunch? You know what, first off, thank you, Jerry, for having me on here and having me join the crew this year. Uh, you know, uh, the last five years, I've been kind of serving as NASCAR media. I started off with a blog and just kind of built it up and went from my blog and got the opportunity to go to On Pit Road. And then from On Pit Road, I got the opportunity to go to Front Stretch. And then after three years, I decided that I wanted to just try something new for this year. And so I took the opportunity with Daniel, uh, Daniel Overbay and his photography outlets. That way I could possibly get to the racetrack more this year with COVID. And so, you know, I needed somewhere to take my ARCA stuff because I had really built up the ARCA content over at Front Stretch with Mark Crystal. And, you know, in the long run, you know, I kind of felt like Front Stretch was at the point where I could no longer really help it. And Mark Crystal was really doing well on his own. And so I kind of felt like I wanted to go somewhere to start over from scratch. And kicking the tires seemed like the greatest place to do it because the fact that the there wasn't really any groundwork done yet and i felt like i could really start building something and kicking the tires i couldn't anywhere else we have a we have a lot of following for uh different forms of auto racing obviously we don't just do nascar and uh, we, uh, we also do supercross and uh do some localized dirt racing mc indycar uh arca has been one of those things we do when they're at daytona uh, when they're at Talladega, things things like that. When there's a big announcement, I'm really good friends with the Venturinis. Um, so it, it's we should have been doing more, but we just don't have the band power. Uh, so it was kind of a no-brainer to bring you on, especially since we have a, probably one of the, I'm not going to say the largest, we've got one of the, the top five fan bases of, of most of the online, uh, you know, full-time motorsports media sites out there uh definitely definitely in the top 10 i would i would i would argue that we're uh we're somewhere near, near the top five for sure um if you take away the espns and stuff like that you know the, the the big guys that have millions and millions of dollars but i'm happy to have you on i know that uh when i put the word out to the guys they uh, uh and to sarah everybody seemed you know thrilled and for me uh having you know more content's great uh, you have a story up right now. You're gonna, I guess that's a, a little bit what you're going to talk about uh, on the show tonight. But uh, talking about Daytona and talking about kicking off the Arca season because uh, they're on the track before NASCAR is. Yep, every year they go on the track before NASCAR does, and uh, that's kind of been a staple of the Arca schedules. There's always a preseason test where you know drivers are looking for looking to get clearance. They're looking to get experience. They're looking to get just experience behind a race car, and you know. The big thing that we're seeing this year is there's a couple of truck teams that are running their drivers that, you know, are going to need to get clearance for the next year energy resources 250 and the NASCAR racing experience 300. You know, they're going to really need experience. So we've got Carson Hawks ever who will be running for Nice Motorsports. He'll be testing this weekend along with um, Josh Berry has been added to the list uh, really late this afternoon. I noticed his name popped up. And so Josh Berry is looking for clearance as him to run for the, um, NASCAR Racing Experience 300 and the Xfinity Series with Junior Motorsports. So, you know, we've really got a wide variety of different people, and especially with today's announcement by ARCA about the road to Daytona that is entering its ninth season. You know, the big thing about it is it gives the drivers in the West and East Series an opportunity to show that, you know, they've got something more, and it gives them an opportunity in the main ARCA Series that kind of they wouldn't get otherwise. And, you know, ARCA and Fast Track Racing and Andy Hillenberg have really done a great job this year you know, to really give a platform for four drivers that include Blaine Perkins, who was a runner-up last year in the West Series, an opportunity to get on the track with, you know, the main arc competitors and, you know, running with champions like Brett Holmes will be a big deal to them because of the fact that, you know, if they have any, you know, questions, they can, I'm pretty sure they're going to try to find Brett during the weekend and try to get some advice. And, you know, I guess that's the coolest thing about Brett Holmes returning this year is the fact that, you know, he's such a seasoned veteran and, that's a big deal because of the fact that we don't have very many seasoned veterans, especially this season with Michael Self leaving the organization or leaving the whole sport entirely and moving over to Trans Am to be a GM of one of the teams. So, you know, Brett Holmes is really leading the charge for the, the veteran movement this year that 
we've not really seen him take. And so I'm really intrigued on to see how he can take the leadership role and really benefit it as a champion. Um, you know, the big thing about this weekend's test is that, you know, there's going to be a lot of single car runs. There's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a small packs, but there's never really ever big packs because of the fact that a lot of these drivers don't have experience running in the big pack and, and bringing back up cars, as we kind of know with the cup series and the Xfinity series, bringing back up cars at this point is just not going to happen because of the fact that, you know, most of our major states, governments do not allow this many people to, to convene in one place, meaning that, you know, there's really not an opportunity to build backup cars. And I really feel like, you know, this test will be important to a lot of teams because we're unknown if there will be a practice with the Daytona race. We're pretty sure there will be, but it probably won't be very long. It'll be like a lot of the practices we had last year. So, you know, the test is really crucial in, in I guess, this year more than ever because of the fact that, you know, there's a lot of drivers that are seeking experience behind the wheel of a truck or of an ARCA car. And yeah, though they're not really similar, you know, it really gives you the experience that they don't wouldn't have gotten pending they wouldn't have had practice this year so you know drivers like Carson and drivers like Josh Berry are really going to benefit from uh, Friday and Saturday test sessions to try to just get some track time and try to better themselves and you know maybe give themselves a better chance that they may have not had had they just showed up to Daytona blind well, you know, I, I talked to Charlie Carl today, and uh, he's looking forward to you covering uh, the, the ARCA series for us and uh, said reach out to him if you need anything. Uh, it, it, before I forget, I want to I want to mention uh, we've got Zach Catanz ready, Justin Schuler, and Seth Eggert also on the show tonight, myself, Jerry Jordan. Um, you know, I didn't – I usually intro those guys when I uh, open up the show, but I wanted to get to you. I want to mention something. You mentioned Brett – home or brett holmes and i have some news about brett holmes and that is he uh, well let's just say i have a rumor that i'm pretty <laughs> sure is confident uh is is, is he's going to be doing some truck stuff next year or this year and uh and, and and i think seth might actually know a little bit about this too uh you know obviously in this business we get a lot of tips and sources and things i can't confirm it because i don't know about it but seth can you elaborate a little bit on that because uh, obviously i got that that call earlier today well what i've heard is not only does he have a truck ride uh he's also going to continue in arca and he's actually going to be splitting time between the two series and when he's not riding the arca car it'll be sam Mayer in the car when he's not riding the truck, it would be Sam Mayer in the truck. And in part, that's uh, part of uh, the, I at least from what I'm hearing, the Chevrolet uh, Driver's Edge Development Program to help Sam get ready for the Xfinity Series with Junior Motorsports later this year. That's very interesting. Like I said, you know, obviously uh, news happening all around the sport, um, you know, knocking out the ARCA stuff, it, you know, we've got obviously things happening in, in iRacing. I'll, I'll get to some stuff that's happening with uh, uh, with the test at, at Charlotte early this week. I think Zach has some information uh, on a couple of drivers that uh, uh, may be stepping up and doing some stuff. And Justin's uh, got some disciplinary uh, infractions <laughs> that, uh, not him personally, he's going to talk about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to leave all the discipline up to his wife to handle Justin. Um, but that's, that's his personal issues. We're, we're talking about racing here. Uh, but seriously, Seth, tell what, what's going on in the iRacing world. Uh, and when do I get to race in the, in the, for the fans racing league and, and, uh, in some of these races that we're sponsoring from kicking the tires. Well, I'll start with the, for the fans racing league qualifying their speed weeks starts this Saturday for their, uh, grand national series and their cup series on Sunday. Well, I uh, won't be here Saturday. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they are going to have dual races and uh, consolation races a week from this weekend. Yay! So, so oh, there man. is that. <laughs> 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 I'm trying. Anyway, uh, this past weekend was the Wicked Energy Gum Fake 500, which we uh, sponsored the Rookie of the Year Award uh, for that race. Uh I, they haven't chosen the Rookie of the Year yet. I believe that's supposed to be this weekend that they choose the Rookie of the Year. Okay. But uh, Seth the Merchant won after getting off sequence on lap 27 of the 200-lap, uh, 500-mile race. And just by being off sequence, he was able to uh, get out front, use strategy, and he won 
by 11 hundredths of a second in a four wide photo oh, finish. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't get closer than that. And Seth the Merchant, uh, he was in the iRacing Pro Series. He failed to transfer to the Coca-Cola Series. Speaking of the Coca-Cola Series, there's four teams that left and four new teams. Uh, Renegades left. Uh, Virtual uh, uh, Racing School, which won the team championship last year, left. G2 Mm. Esports left. And Kyle Larson Racing was... uh, Suspended, I guess, would be the best way of wording it after uh, his uh, inappropriate comment on iRacing last year. So that, but that's that. Those penalties have been served. All that's taken yeah. care of. But he's not come. I guess that team's not coming back. That team is not coming back. Okay. Uh, what do I need to do to pick up a team so that we can uh, have somebody in the Coke series? How much is it going to cost me to buy a, buy a, uh, you know an electronic <laughs> uh, <laughs> pixel a pixelated team? Well, first off, their free agency just ended. <laughs> But they are still announcing where drivers are landing. Okay. Uh, uh, the new teams, McLaren Shadow, which is the uh, esports arm of McLaren F1. Yeah, they got lots of money. I can't compete with that. Yeah. <laughs> Elliot Sadler Esports. He's 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 a broke country boy from Virginia. <laughs> I think we're okay. We can we could probably we can probably, he, he he coaches baseball for you know yes. so we could probably hang with him. Space Station Gaming, which is partnered with Will Rogers. I know Will. It's a he's a good kid. X Set Gaming, which is an offshoot of Phase Clan, which has an association with Anthony Alfredo. Fast Pasta, you guys know Fast Pasta, so uh, <laughs> y'all uh, y'all have interviewed him for the show yeah. here. So, well, cool. Next. That sounds fun. Now, uh, only four teams or five teams so far have uh, actually announced drivers out of the 20. One of those is Stuart Haas Racing because I just yeah. saw it come across the feed. So yeah. and, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. So yeah. uh, Stuart he- Haas, well, I think the biggest surprise so far is uh, John Gorlinski is leaving William Byron Esports, which uh, his teammate – at William Byron, won the championship last year. And he left for Wood Brothers Racing. Hmm, let me think about this for a second. Guys, weigh in. If you could drive for... I, I love William Byron. He's a great kid. If you could drive for anything connected to William Byron, <laughs> or you could drive for anything connected to the Wood Brothers, yeah. which would you pick? Justin? <laughs> if you're talking about racing, I doing iRacing stuff, you got to go with William Byron, but... What? <laughs> The Wood Brothers, Zach. Come on, back me up here. I think of Wood Brothers. I think of like 1950s. I don't think like up to date. I was going to say, yeah, you're going to be you know? racing on a Windows 95 computer <laughs> 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 on dial-up oh, internet. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Instead of a com- instead of a keyboard for your computer, you have a typewriter. I like that. Christian, it's your <laughs> first day. You better side with me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but overall. Uh, Richmond Raceway Esports is making their announcement on Thursday. So a little bit after this episode goes up, their drivers will be known. Team Dylan uh, announced Corey Vincent and Taylor Hurst. Uh, Klingerman Esports, they're having Bob Ryan come back and iRacing Pro Series champion Isaac Gann. Uh, Wood Brothers, they have Dylan Duvall coming back and they uh, took on... Graham Boland, who was with Joe Gibbs last year. Uh, Jim Beaver Esports has Michael Guest and Kane Cook. Um, Michael Guest was with Team Dillon last year. Kane Cook was on one of the teams that opted to leave. Interesting you said Michael Guest. He's a uh, city councilman in my town. Not the same guy. (laughs) No, not the same guy. (laughs) But but, uh, overall, uh, the teams are going to be super competitive this year. Uh, the back end teams uh, that the drivers are actually on and works on setups. Uh, Dylan Duvall and I believe Ryan Luza joined what's known as Dead Zone Racing. So they're going to be working with the, uh, if I remember correctly, they're going to be working with uh, Ray Alfala and a few others. Although I think Ray's also moving to a different team. So it, there's a lot of moving parts and pieces. What about that other? 
iRacing League, did they do anything this week? James Davidson won. Okay. There were a lot of wrecks. Shocking. There, uh, Monday Night Racing, uh, <laughs> we had one 30-lap green flag run IndyCar at Auto Club, but there were a lot of wrecks, especially on restarts. Uh, I was in position to get a top five finish and got wiped out on the final lap. But you're in the top 12, right? I am in the top 13, although I'm not I'm not sure how next week is going to go. The Porsches at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Hmm, okay. I've never run Canadian Tire Motorsport Park before. Ooh. Neither have I. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't run very many places at all. I don't know if you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I I got that. I got that. <laughs> I don't think anyone else got it, but I got it. I, I got it. I got it. I just wasn't saying anything. It's okay. I, 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 can take shot, I can take shots at myself. I got it. It's fine. All right. Well, uh, what's next? Sensitivity training. Uh, sensitivity <laughs> training. Oh, oh yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. So, yeah, um, yeah, we probably, pro before this show's over, we'll all have to go. Uh, <laughs> So, so who's getting sensitivity training this week, Justin? <laughs> oh my gosh, we get sound like a game show, um, which oh. which has kind of sadly become. I feel. Um, uh, although this one, I don't know. Um, you know, there's lots of different views on this. Uh, yeah, I'll just share mine. I think it's a little too far fetched, but it is what it is. Um, but Haley Deegan's going into sensitivity training on iRacing. Uh, it seems to be the place. If you don't want to go to sensitivity training, please don't play iRacing. Um, that'll help. Or or don't be Josh Rayon. Or don't be Josh yeah, that's, Rayon. That, that's true. Let me, let me just let me weigh into something here real quick. Uh, because Haley said an inappropriate word. It starts with an R. It doesn't, you know, but uh, it was making... She wasn't intentionally making fun of someone or anything yes. like that she was just making a flippant comment i'm not defending her i've already you know said my piece on, you know, to somebody else about this but a, a very well-known very high profile driver who has had his fair share of run-ins with the nascar hauler said this i racing stuff is going to end nascar drivers careers if they're not careful yep and we've already seen that and it, where it's hurt them for sure and mm -hmm. you know when you're in your living room and you're comfortable and you're sitting there or your sim seat like i am and stuff goes bad you make a flippant comment you're you know it's not how you act it's not who you are it may not be right but it's not i don't think in a hundred percent of the cases that it's a judgment or reflection of your character. That's just me. Um, should we be more careful? Yes. Have we, have we gone, uh, has a pendulum swung too far to the politically, politically correct side? In many cases, yes. It's not going to hurt Haley's career. She's going to learn from it. She immediately apologized for it. Um, and I actually know what her, some of her punishment is going to be, but, Weigh in, Justin, and, and finish the story because uh, that way, you know, I, like I said, I, 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 I can't, I can't defend her, but I also yeah. don't think this is a career-ending issue. No, and and to add on to what you said, um, uh, to to put to put you guys in the driver's seat, you know, we don't have cameras or radios constantly watching us as as you're going from local track level to regional and then like ARCA where Haley's coming from. Um, you know, ARCA does get some some exposure, but nowhere near as much as, you know, Cup or Xfinity or, or, or even trucks. So, you know, you get comfortable in that kind of setting where you can you can blast off those words when you're angry at another driver, even as you're racing them on the track or whatever. Um, and no one's going to hear it because you don't push that radio button. There's no TVs around. There's not cameras constantly watching you. But iRacing, there is. The, the, it's this 24-7 monitored lobby, and you say something, it's going to get out there. It's going to be exposed. Well, uh, if I may, in, in this case, the main reason why it was exposed was actually because Haley was streaming on Twitch. Yeah, on this Twitch. was actually her first stream ever. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
So, but see that. <clears throat> but see that's what I'm saying. Like she has and, a camera on her twenty four seven. Yeah, and it wasn't an official race either. This was a uh, street stock race being hosted at Michigan by Ryan Vargas. Yeah, just for fun. So, in part, <clears throat> at least you know, just my personal opinion. I think this is the right course of action because it's not mm. as egregious as Kyle Larson. Right. However, it is still an in, inappropriate comment. Oh, 100%. So, basically, the way I look at it is she's young, she's going to learn from this. She made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Yes, she owned up to it, but... She's also, it's, like, it's, yeah, 19 years old. I don't yeah. know how old she is. She's a kid. You know, I mean, yeah. as I said... On this phone, and this is still the I, I turned it off so y'all don't know uh, who it was. As I said in a in a group chat earlier, would any one of you and any one of those judgmental people that are out there want a camera on you at the moment you said or did the worst thing in your career? Of course not. Uh, yeah. No. Okay, so we try to hold these people to a standard that we don't want to hold ourselves to, mm -hmm. and I, that's where I have that's where I have an issue. Everybody's human sensitivity training. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Let's do it. There's no excuse for it except for we're not perfect, and you know I've said and done things that I you know am ashamed of or look back on in the in the in in the past, and and you know God, I'm glad there wasn't a camera there, you know. Yeah. I, Every one of us has. I don't care who you are, if you're honest with yourself. So, you know, she'll go to her classes, and you know, she'll t she'll do what she has to do, and and it, and she'll move on like Larson did. And thank God that you know Larson was able to come back because I said at the time, I wrote that I covered that story. Well, you know, in depth. I don't think the penalty fit the crime, yeah. and uh, but I understand where NASCAR has to has to take a stand. Yeah. Now, so so I also I also support Bubba 100% in yeah. the crazy shit that happened at, at Talladega. So, uh, you know, there and and I wrote a I wrote an editorial about that. So, you can't say that I'm soft one way and and eat and hard the other because I'm I'm that way regardless. Mm -hmm. Now, to my knowledge, I racing is not penalizing Haley at least if they are, they haven't said if right. they are or not which I, I would think, if anything, based on uh, other instances that are somewhat like this, might be like a 30-day chat ban or suspension. Uh, Grant, you would still be able to race, just not be able to talk on the sim. Yeah. Um, and I think, too, the one other thing I wanted to add on is um, just with, with what happened to Larson last year and then Haley this past week, I think for a lot of the younger drivers that are coming up that do want to make racing their career, that do want to go up into trucks and Xfinity and Cup and stuff like that, or maybe even to IndyCar or IMSA, um, like, just remember, like, like iRacing is going to be your first step, or if you do streaming or whatever, like, those are going to be your first steps where a camera is going to be on you 24-7, and your stuff is going to be recorded, like, nonstop. And so, um, I think that's going to be a, a great learning tool um, for some of those people uh, to know that when you do make it up to Cup or IMSA or IndyCar or whatever, there are cameras watching you 24-7. That's why I ha that's why I handle Ryder the way that I do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, I, I handle his PR for uh, uh, Christian. You may not know this, Ryder Wells. He's a young, up and coming uh, micro sprint driver that was at the Tulsa Shootout. Came in nineteenth. Uh, he'd never been there before. He was a rookie. He ran the gambit. He ran a heat race. He ran a uh, qualifier. He ran a, a a B main and LCQ, and then made it to the uh, big show and finished nineteenth. Uh, after starting dead last. So uh, I, I, I promote him, we sponsor him at Kick in the Tires, and uh, um, he's, he's a really good kid, but he doesn't know all this stuff, even though you know, he's got a great family, uh, and they teach him, and, they, and he's been brought up right, but he's never been around all the cameras and the hype and the stuff that we have to go through and see every day. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll revert to what I said earlier about, uh, about Bubba and about uh, Kyle and about uh, Haley. That doesn't mean that, you know, you can put a swastika on your, on your, you know, breakfast pastry and say you did it accidentally because I'll call your ass out for it every single time, you know, and, and you said, you mentioned that with Josh Rayom, 
Yeah. Uh, so you know, and then you go on a, you get a sense, of, you get a, get a sympathetic, and lazy media outlet to post your side of the story without fact checking it and backing it up, and then you know everybody looks like a fool on that side. So, um, is what it is. Now, now we've got all the sensitivity stuff out, and I'm probably going to have to go to class. And that's going to send me to class. I kept my mouth shut. I didn't say. And, and good. Zach, do you have any good news for us? Yeah, I mean, I got some good news for at least two guys um, and and two teams, in my opinion. Um, yeah, the first was uh, Kaz Grella. Uh, he's a he's a kid who we haven't seen as much of lately in the last few years, yeah. but. Uh, we're going to see some of them at least uh, next month in Daytona 500. Uh, colleague Racing uh, tapped in to uh, fill in their, their car. They're going to be running part-time in Cup throughout this year, and um, Growler's getting the first crack at it in their open car for the 500 next year. And I mean, a really cool move. I mean, he wasn't really one of the guys I personally had in mind when it came to that ride. Um, obviously, you go to Justin Haley probably, um, I mean, he ran the 500 last year, uh, finished fairly well too. Uh, but I mean, bringing in Gorilla for this, I, I feel is a total win for the team. I mean, putting Kaz into any team is a win for that team. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he's a proven contender in pretty much every series that he's raced in, including cup. I mean, he, he ran one race last year at the Daytona road course, led laps, finished seventh. Um, I believe it was the best cup debut finish the best finish in a cup debut in 20 years um and then in xfinity i mean he, we've seen him a few years in that series on and off uh he's put together multiple top five efforts for big teams like rcr and small teams like fury race cars and uh jgl and uh, a couple of those were at daytona pair that with his truck win there from 2017 i mean the high banks are just a perfect place for him to get back in a cup car and um Saying that it's an open car, I mean, I am confident that the team will still be able to make the race. Uh, this field is kind of getting more and more stacked. I feel the entry list is kind of growing, as it always does for this race every year. Uh, but given that they did it last year, I, I'm confident that it won't be as big of an issue. And if he does make the race, I mean, I feel like he's a fantastic under underdog driver to look out for. And he might not have the cup experience, but he's proven to – be able to bring that performance in a, this kind of small bubbled part-time area. He's just so used to having to go right away and not have that time to really learn the car. And uh, another one, this guy was way out of way out of nowhere, uh, at least for me, was uh, Miguel Paluto. Um, I mean, we say Grella, we haven't seen much of him. We haven't seen any of this guy in what eight nine years i mean he, he's been running in south america yeah. in uh touring cars yeah. i, touring I cars, think yeah. i think he won a championship there and he's he also sponsored by brand yeah yeah he won the championship in the porsche cup uh yeah. last year um, i mean he won titles uh years and years ago even before he was uh he got that truck ride but uh yeah he'll be back for this year three races with junior motorsports in there uh, number eight, which is continuing to be a very exciting car to look out for this year. Uh, he'll be running Mid-Ohio, Daytona, uh, the road course, and then uh, Coda. And uh, this was, uh, I, I've known that he's been wanting to get back into the NASCAR Nationals for a number of years. Uh, as we said, he's been competing over in Brazil uh, for uh, quite a while uh, with Brandt, tremendous success. And finally, a ride has now opened up, and it, it comes with a, a really strong team, of course. Um, I mean, all sorts of races. I feel like that team is kind of giving back to all sorts of races this year. I mean, we have Sam Mayer, who's a, who's a standout driver, um, who's getting his first starts. Uh, Josh Berry, of course, a, a, a rising star coming out of short tracks. And now giving this guy a, a second chance. And uh, Pluto had a good... Good NASCAR career, I mean, way back. I mean, we're talking 10 years ago, so it might not translate, but uh, I remember following him and, and his fellow countrymen, uh, Nelson Piquet Jr., back in 2011, 2012. And though Piquet kind of burst onto the scene a little bit more, uh, he had multiple truck wins, an Xfinity win. He made it to full-time Xfinity. Uh, Pluto, I felt, was always kind of right there, you know? He never got that win, but he, I felt he had his place in the truck series, and Having all these years in the bag now, he's 
jumping into an incredibly competitive series. I mean, he made two Xfinity starts back in 2012, and it's a lot different than it was then. Uh, I mean, back then, I, I looked mm -hmm. into it, and the top 20 in points in 2012, only eight drivers had a top five finish. Last year, 17. <laughs> I mean, basically everybody. And the percentage, of, the percentage of laps completed, the average finish between first and 20th, uh, there's less start in parks. I mean, just overall, the series has gotten um, incredibly far more closer than it was back then. So he's going to have a lot of learning to do. Uh, but just at the end of the day, to see someone like him go away for so long and to find his way back, wanting it for so wanting it for that entire time, and to have um, uh, someone from Brazil, someone representing a, a new country, uh, that that's that was really cool to see. Yeah. And, well, it's going to be interesting. I like Miguel personally. He's a great guy. So that and, and I, I, Kaz Grawl is amazing because I mean, you know, he he can drive anything. And I had fun uh, he, hanging out with him at, at Coda. So it, you know. if I remember correctly, he even drove a uh, show car to a top ten finish or a top five finish. Yeah, at Daytona once. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So um, that's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, and uh, granted. Uh, this might be more in a Christian's wheelhouse than ours to a certain point because he's running more art of what he said, but he's also going to run the two truck dirt track races. Uh, Devin Rouse, who is testing for Andy Hillenberg this weekend, uh, and I believe he is just the second uh, openly LGBT driver to compete in NASCAR and would be the first in ARCA. Yeah, we that was announced this morning that he would be running it. It's like the first, I believe he said that. I think he openly came out and said that he would be the first. And you know, I hadn't done really my research because you know that's kind of a hard thing to research. But yes, yes. Stephen Rhodes was the first in NASCAR in 2003 in trucks. Uh, out, but other than that, I haven't found anything in ARCA. Yeah, it's it's a hard statistic to look up because not many people really kept up with yeah. it. Uh, but talking about Kaz Grala, uh, I remember Grala. I interviewed him in Iowa the year that he was with the uh, with Fury, and you know they were their time was really starting to run out. And I remember sitting there with him, and you know he knew his time was running out. He knew his time to win was running out. And they had just came off a bunch of finishes that really showed they could win. And I remember sitting there, and you know you'd never thought he would have ever known that his 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 tenure in Xfinity would have been coming to a close really quickly, but. You know, and to speak with him and his such like his such energetic attitude and knowing that he may not have a ride the following weekend, you know, that, that's something that really stood stood out to me. And you know, it's really good to see somebody from ARCA kind of get the opportunity to run the Cup Series, especially in the 500. I'm pretty sure they have he has some kind of ownership, or his dad has some kind of ownership of Fury. At some point, I, I think there's some level of of involvement there. His dad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. His dad owned. That's what I thought. I thought his dad owned the. Yeah. Because Fury was on the car at Coda, and uh, and it's it's all it's on his cars a lot, but obviously the team didn't. Uh, yeah, stick around. I, I think yeah. his dad co-owns it with the the Yuris. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, I have some breaking news. Just found out, Chase Elliott. The star of Dawsonville, or whatever you call him, will be in the <laughs> F main. That's F Oof. at the Chili Bowl this weekend. So <laughs> one Saturday, Oof. he's going to have a busy day if he wants to make it to the A because he's going to have to run through everything. Uh, it's not unheard of, but I think I think he can I think he can advance up. But uh, the last main. That's are the there, last. No. Is that the lowest, or is there more below it? That sounds like it'd be the lowest. I, it might be the yeah. lowest this year, but I know there's been lower. There may be a that. G main, but I'm not sure. Okay. I heard F main. Jeez. I was just told F main. So um, I can say this. Ryder Wells, in his first trip to the Tulsa shootout, made it to the B main and transferred over into the A main. I'm just pointing well, that out for future <laughs> reference. Well, for future <laughs> reference, when, 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 when you're looking for stats of future NASCAR stars, <laughs> Ryder Wells qualified better for the Tulsa shootout well, his first time at 13 years old than Chase Elliott did. 
I was going to say, so when Chase Elliott's retiring, you're saying that Ryder Wells is next in line to take his ride, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And he would be great because that's actually Ryder's favorite driver. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he did say that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, um, Chili Bowl this weekend, I will be there. Uh, uh, Christopher Bell tearing, tearing up the world. He, um, he won the uh, race of champions that they had. Yeah, won the, that's like the third time he's done that or something. Did I Rico my... Abreu go for a flip also? Uh, I know Brett Moffat did. So, yeah, uh, a lot. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. After going there last, for the for the for the Chelsea shootout, and then you know I'll be there this weekend. I'm amazed there's not more flips. I've got some <laughs> yes. photos. Uh, uh, we ran that photo gallery, and uh, uh, and cars. You know, I like I like showing photos of cars flipping through the air. Um, so you'll get lots of those this oh. coming weekend if I, if it happens because I'll be the, on, I'll be on point for photos. The last I saw, granted, this was a, I think earlier today. The last I saw, the flip count for the Chili Bowl was up to twenty five. Twenty five. Mm -hmm. Wow. And okay. that's since Monday. Hmm. So hmm. they're getting about eight a day. Yeah, well, Oof. yeah, about eight a day. But you know what? So what? Oh, we'll find out. We'll have photos of them. Hopefully, hopefully it'll. It's not. It doesn't hurt them. No one's been hurt that I've seen, and uh, you know they got a nice fence all the way around it, and you know there's not like not lots of nice cushy dirt and clay. Uh, so <laughs> ask them that when their when their head is flying towards it. <laughs> It's probably not too cushy. Yeah, or, exactly. uh, well, the flag man had to uh, dodge one of the flips earlier today. Oh, oh that wow. sounds like me at Santa Maria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still have that picture where a car literally flipped over me. My parents thought I was overreacting until they saw the uh, photo of the pipe. The bar that was right over my head was completely bent in from the car hitting right there. That was fun. Hey, I tell you mm. what. I don't know how Ryder didn't wreck or flip when he was racing, you know, two weeks ago, because I was, I, I just knew that this, you know, this kid was going to get, they were trying to turn him, especially in that, in that, uh, you know, last chance qualifier race and it, well in the B main too, but the, in the LCQ, man, they were all over him. So, uh, oh, they, yeah. they drove, his car was tore up. But yeah, we're gonna go do the Chili Bowl. My first trip to the Chili Bowl. Hopefully, I can go there and uh, and talk to some drivers. And we're gonna do. I uh, want to bring this up. We have a new uh, service where we're going to be able to go live uh, with the podcast, with other yeah. things, uh, with other uh, other streaming type things. So, like, okay, for example, we could go live and feed in the Zoom call from Daytona. Okay, with all the drivers doing their media tours. And every time they say, I'm excited about 2021, we could all take a shot. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I don't drink, so uh, I guess I'd be the you non can, you, fun one. You, you'll be the, <laughs> no, you'll be the one that, you know, to, to make fun of us when we all You'll hold trashed. the counter. You'll just yeah, sit there you can, and go you can like, hold the counter. I but, could uh, hold the counter, or yeah. I could be the translator at the yeah, end of the night. Yeah, you will need, we'll need one for sure. <laughs> but yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're working, Justin and I are doing some things behind the scenes, working on yep. some new technology to be able to go live with the show from time to time. Uh, also to be able to go live from the track from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be uh, something new for our, uh, our viewers and, uh, you know, fans of kicking the tires. And by the way, um, don't forget to like or subscribe and hit that button down oh. at the bottom of the screen. Um, we're almost done. I'm going to wrap up, but I did want to say we had a new car test or, you know, Gen 7 car test at Charlotte this week. Uh, John Prope said they brought the car back out there and uh, and used uh, Kurt to, to run it. It was good for Kurt um, because he was able to get a baseline of where the car was, where it is now. Um, and, 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 you know, so that gives him an idea of, of, of how to give feedback to, uh, to Pro Probst is the, the, the guy who's in charge of all the development of the new car and, and, and racing uh, operations for, for NASCAR. So, uh, they wanted to, they wanted to bring the car back out to Charlotte and get some more, more information. They did that and, uh, we'll see what happens. You know, this is, uh, the car looks cool on the track. Obviously, uh, we have two of them, um, uh, you know the IMSA guys over. Uh, they built one, and and they've been uh, they've been running it, and uh, along with the NASCAR one. So that's uh, it's going to be interesting to see it when it gets on the track, hopefully next year. So. 
guys, anybody uh, got anything they want to add? Justin, Zach, Christian, Seth, anybody? Just uh, one more thing. Supercross getting back underway here. Uh, I know we covered a little bit of that last year. Um, and then right when we started to, we had all the website issues. That's what I, when I had to kind of step down from coverage of that and focus on getting the site back up and uh, everything transferred over. But now that things are kind of settled back in, I'm looking to uh, cover that for us uh, over the next few months. So uh, no races out here in California. They usually have their Daytona 500 uh, kind of thing. They call it A1, which is Anaheim Round 1. Uh, that's not going to be out here anymore. About half of the season is going to be out there in Texas by you, Jerry. So first three rounds in Houston, then they're going to go up to Indianapolis and then uh, uh, head out to Florida for a few more before... Uh, making their way back to Texas and then closing out the season in Utah. So, um, I will be, uh, I'll be at a couple of races in Texas. That won't be an issue. I'll make sure I'll get up, uh, get up there for that. Uh, I covered two or three, uh, of those events last year. It was a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, Sean Brennan and those guys over at Supercross. uh, great people. Great dude. I learned a lot about motorcycle racing that I ever, I never even knew. So, yeah. and the, and, and you talk about approachable and friendly for the most part, they're great guys to deal with. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it, it's been a lot of fun. So uh, we'll have cool that. Guy. Yeah. We'll have that this year. Uh, again, um, <clears throat> we're looking at some, some, obviously we've got IMSA coming up 24 hour type, uh, Rolex stuff. Um, don't know if I'll actually be there because of the COVID situation still with NASCAR and IMSA and all that. Uh, but we're going to try to make as many races as we can, um, and cover the season, you know, the best that we can uh, that we can do it under the circumstances. Hopefully, by I'm predicting by May or June things will taper off. Uh, but I'm also predicting that we will not be at Sonoma for the road course race this year. So uh, you yeah. may have heard that here first. I think uh, I think there's some rumblings uh, happening in NASCAR right now to to plan for something uh, for an alternative. Uh, to, to going out to California. Sorry, Justin, your state kind of sucks. Not a surprise um, <laughs> since Auto Club, they're just following Auto Club suit, and that's just uh, how our governor is. So, hey, can you do me a favor tomorrow when you're not working? Um, can you drive over to Auto Club and take some photos, maybe, and see what kind of uh, what they've got done and if they started tearing things up or, or what, what's going on? I will, as far as I know, they're not tearing anything down until after next year. It's going to stay the yeah. same. Uh, same format as is this year. Are they gonna, are they going to let it run? They're gonna, they're they're not going to tear it down before. No, they're going to run more, one more race on the current formation. Okay, the next so year. I, I wasn't aware Correct. that was happening because I, I, I've been following the uh, the the local commissioners' information on and stuff, trying to get in, you know get data on what the plans are. I also looked up some stuff on Chicagoland, and basically NASCAR just kind of you know idle on Chicagoland Speedway, so uh, I wasn't sure what was going to happen with uh, with Auto Club at this point. Got it. Yeah, and then um, uh, our, our local cart club races out there in a couple weeks, uh, so I'll be able to get uh, some photos if you want some still. Uh, yeah. Then. So. Absolutely. Guys, that's going to do it for us this week here on The Kicking Show. Thanks for tuning in. We will be back next week with episode 21 and all of the rumblings and happenings at the Chili Bowl and whatever other news we can come up with in the world of motorsports. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Bye.